Hey everybody, I'm Tommy, and this is the third video in the build series of videos for the MicroShop project. Whether it's your first time here, or even if you've been here before, welcome to One Minute Workbench. So in this video, I'm going to cover building the fence for the table saw and building the miter gauge for the table saw. Picking up from the last video, I had just mounted a circular saw to create a temporary table saw. For the base of the miter gauge, I glued together strips that equaled the thickness of the main top components, clamped them together, and set them aside to dry. I then made these components, which I used to create the angle adjustable head of the miter gauge. Since I did not already have a miter gauge, I just cut these to length by hand. Cutting these to length by hand is fine since the quality of the length cut won't affect how the miter gauge performs. To attach the head of the miter gauge to the base, I first made marks so that the center of the two pieces would be aligned. I then drilled holes to accommodate a hex bolt. I forgot that I needed a recess on the bottom, so I had to drill it after drilling the smaller hole. This made it a bit more difficult, but I just went slow and it wasn't too bad. I added a T-nut to the hole and made sure it was fully recessed below the surface. Using some scraps, I cut some thin strips and made a small knob for the miter gauge. To make the knob, I drilled a half inch counterbore and then drilled a 5 16 hole the rest of the way through. For the smaller piece, I just drilled a 1 quarter inch hole. I hammered the hex bolt's head into the counter bore. I then threaded the quarter inch hole in the smaller piece with a 5 16 18 thread tapping bit. After applying glue to the smaller piece, I threaded it onto the bolt and tightened it down so it would provide enough clamping pressure for the glue. I shaped the piece by hand, but if I were to do this project again, I would have left it with square corners until the disc sander portion of the job was ready. I fully threaded the knob into the miter gauge, used a sharpie to mark it, and then cut it down to size with a hacksaw. I then used a file to take off the sharp edges. I finished assembling the miter gauge and used a framing square to get it set at a perfect 90 degrees. To create the outside rail that captures the miter gauge in a way that wouldn't hold it too tight, I used a single thickness of paper as a shim. I only use pen nails for this part of the process because later on in this build, this part will need to be removed and reset. To test the miter gauge, I cut a few small pieces and verified that they were nice and square. 
At that point, there was still more work to be done on the miter gauge, but most of that will come a little bit later on during this build. For the time being, I just trimmed the rail down to size so I wouldn't run into it as I moved around the shop. With the miter gauge working well, I was able to start working on the table saw's fence. In case you're wondering why I didn't build the fence first, it's because the miter gauge could be built without having perfect 90 degree cuts and still work just fine. The fence, on the other hand, must have perfect 90 degree cuts in order to work correctly. And again, a big part of this project was building it without using standard shop tools like my table saw or miter saw. The fence is just comprised of thin strips and small blocks that work together to build a long rectangular box. The fact that it's a box will help it to be straight and square and remain straight and square over its entire length. This first version of the fence didn't exactly work. It was straight and square, but it was only okay at clamping in place, and it didn't have a large enough reference surface to be square to the blade. That said, I had to square it up with a framing square before making cuts. So I immediately started working on a new version that had a larger reference surface and a more robust clamping mechanism. For this version, I needed the one end to have a slight recess, as you see here. I toyed with adding these alignment pins, but after fiddling with it for a bit, I realized that they were just going to be overkill and not worth the effort to get them perfectly smooth. I added a piece of 5 16 18 threaded rod through the fence lengthwise and used nylon lock nuts to clamp this end cap piece to the threaded rod. I then added this secondary piece to the end cap, which just provides a little extra thickness for attaching the T-shape that goes on the bottom. This will make a little more sense in just a bit. The knob for this design is different than the one I created for the miter gauge. This one has a T-nut installed instead of a hex bolt. This small piece is really just a spacer that makes the knob easier to turn, and the bolt and nut are just acting as a temporary clamp while the glue dries. Once the glue was dry, I added the knob to the fence. At this point, you might be getting an idea of how the clamping mechanism will work. This piece basically turns the fence into a large T-square. I took special care to make sure that this piece was perfectly square. 
Clamping the framing square in place while I did the rest of the work made this a much easier task. To attach the smaller portion of the clamp to the floating end cap at the other end, I first gently tightened the knob so that the end cap was flush with the end of the fence. It's important not to over tighten here because the small gap near this end allows the end cap to pivot. Pivoting aids the clamping action of the fence, but it's important that the end cap is not in a pivoted position while attaching the small T-shaped piece. As you can see here, the end cap is flush with the end of the fence, yet the gap is still there while I added the T-shape. Once everything was sufficiently dry, I added this compression spring to the threaded rod. The spring fits into the recess at the end of the fence and functions to push the end cap away from the end of the fence as you loosen the knob. This keeps the end cap from being too close to the table, which would cause the fence to bind as you slide it back and forth from left to right. The fence was feeling pretty good at this point, but in order to really kick it up to the next level, I added some low friction tape to the main areas that made contact with the table. Using a razor sharp chisel, I removed any edges that would have caused interference. At that point, the fence was incredibly smooth and I was even able to move it with my pinky finger yet it still had enough clamping strength that I could lift the entire unit from the fence. During some early test cuts, I noticed that the end cap piece would sometimes lift slightly and create an obstruction for the pieces exiting the blade. So I trimmed down just a little bit and gave it another go. There was still a small bit in the way, so I trimmed that as well. At that point, the action of the fence was pretty much perfect, so I started working on the measuring tape. Now, you'll notice that I'm cutting the tape at just before the 24 inch mark. You'll also notice that I'm saving the part that starts at zero. This is because this piece will be temporary and later during the build, I'm going to replace it with the part that starts at zero. I set the fence at a distance of six inches from the blade and made a test cut. It was pretty close but I made an adjustment and tried to get just a little bit closer. Here you can see that the width of the piece is just a few thousandths of an inch from being perfect. In case you didn't know, this is about the thickness of a human hair. With the fence still locked in at that position, I added a mark at a random spot along the T-shape at the end of the fence. I then added the steel measuring tape, being careful to align the six inch mark as perfectly as possible with the line that I had just drawn. You have to be careful when doing this because the adhesive is very aggressive and if you get it wrong, you'll need to try again with a new piece. As you can see here, when the fence is zeroed out, which in this case is actually the 24 inch mark, the fence very gently makes contact with the blade. This is a good indication that the fence is nicely calibrated. 
To further verify it, I set the fence at five inches and made a test cut. When measured with a caliper, the cut was always within 10 thousandths of an inch, which is really good. For comparison, the black lines on my tape measure are about 20 thousandths of an inch thick. So again, this is really good. Since I hadn't finished trimming the miter gauge rail, I decided it was time. The piece was easy to remove because again, it was only attached with pin nails. And when I reattached it, I again only used pin nails because I'm going to have to remove it once more when it comes time to apply finish to the unit. One last thing I had noticed was that in order to get the miter gauge to stay locked in at the position it was set at, I had to apply quite a bit of force. That said, I added this small piece of 60 grit sandpaper, which gave it a lot of friction and made it much easier to tighten down. And that's it for this video. In the next episode in this series, I'll show how I made the large material support arm, as well as a few more of the features of the micro shop. Hey, thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe, and make sure you hit the bell icon so you get notified every time I put out a new episode. I'd love to hear what you think of this fence and miter gauge for this micro shop project in the comments section below. And if you have any quick questions you want answered, hit me up on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. And until the next time I see you, I hope you have fun building something.